Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom, a free service that helps high school students with their math problems. In this video, I'm taking a look at the final part of this three-part question. So I've already worked through part A and part B in separate videos. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to look through those, I'd recommend going and having a look because actually what we're going to do in this part C will make use of both the result in part A as well as pretty much a similar technique that we used in part B. So having um, gotten your head around what's happening with part A and part B is really critical to then understanding what to do for part C. So part C tells us to deduce that A cubed on B plus B cubed on C plus C cubed on A will be greater than or equal to AB plus BC plus AC uh, remembering that we're dealing with a situation where a, b, and c are all greater than zero. So I'll just start by writing that out, what we're trying to get to. So we want to um, uh, deduce is the word that they've used, which is interesting. Um, but basically the result is a cubed on b plus b cubed on c plus c cubed on a we want to show that's greater than or equal to AB plus BC plus AC. And so you can start to notice some of the patterns. We're dealing with all three letters on both sides. On the left hand side we've got our A cubed, B cubed, C cubed, but each one divided by a different letter. And then on the right hand side we've got each combination of the two letters. Now, again, as I mentioned, we're going to use our result from part A. So I'll just write that out. From part A, um, we remember that we had A cubed plus B cubed is greater than or equal to ABC times A on C plus B on C. So that's a, a good starting point. Now, I want to get a situation where I've got A cubed on B, and then I've got um, combinations of two letters. So I want each cube divided by another letter, and then on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, combinations. Now, one way, the one thing I can do that will help me get closer to that is if I pick one of these letters, A, B, C, and bring it over, after then expanding, I'm going to end up kind of with the ingredients I want. And um, because I know I want an A cubed on B, it makes sense to bring B over. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's bring B over and we get um, A cubed on B plus B cubed on B would be greater than or equal to AC times A on C plus B on C. And now we can do a bit of simplifying. So we'll get um, a cubed on b plus, this will simplify to b squared. That would be greater than or equal to, and these c's will all sim cancel and we'll get a squared plus ab. And notice that on the left hand side I've got one of my ingredients and on the right hand side I've got another ingredient. Now I've also got this b squared and this a squared and it would be nice if there's a way to um, get them to disappear. And this is where the technique that we used in part b becomes um, potentially helpful because what we can do is repeat this, um, this step for each of the different combinations and then kind of do a adding left hand side, right hand side to see how things simplify. So what we will do, I'll, I'll work through them, I'll work through the actual detail just to make sure I don't make a mistake and also to give you a few cracks at kind of getting your head around this technique. Um, so the other result um, that we can do, the, the way we extend this result in part A is we can kind of swap the letters. So we could do um, B cubed plus C cubed, we know is greater than or equal to A, B, C and in this case it would be uh, B on A plus um, B becomes, so C on A. And again, here I want B cubed on C, so it makes sense to bring the C over. 
So we'll get um, b cubed on c plus c cubed on c will be greater than or equal to a, b, b on a plus c on a. Uh, this will become b cubed on c plus c squared greater than or equal to, and these all cancel. So we'll get b squared plus uh, b c. So again, looking good, b cubed on c. And then finally, uh, I'll just do it for the last combo. So the third combination result would be a cubed plus c cubed. And that would be greater than a, b, c. And in this case, we get um, a on b plus c on b. So here I want, um, this time I want uh, c cubed. So I've got a cubed on b. I've got b cubed on c. So I need a c cubed on a. So if I bring a over, that's going to help get me there. So we'll go a cubed on a plus c cubed on a is greater than or equal to b c a on b plus c on b. So that will simplify to, I'll just kind of write this around the other way just to make it consistent with the other. So c cubed on a plus a squared greater than or equal to these b's cancel. So we'll get, um, again I'll write this in a similar order. So we'll get c times c is c squared plus a c. And notice now we've got all the ingredients we want. We've got an a, b, b, c and a, c on our right hand side. We've got an a cubed on b, b cubed on c, c cubed on a on the left hand side. And whilst we've also got um, b squared, c squared, a squared, whilst that's on the left hand side, notice it's also on the right hand side, a squared, b squared, c squared. So when we add both sides, all the left hand sides, all the right hand sides, the bits we don't want are going to thankfully cancel out. So um, therefore what we can say is that uh, a cubed on b plus b squared plus b cubed on c plus c squared plus c cubed on a plus a squared. So I've just added up these three left hand sides. That will be greater than or equal to the three right hand sides. So a squared plus a b plus b squared plus b c plus c squared plus a c. And now what I can do is say this b squared will cancel with this b squared, this c squared will cancel with this c squared, and this a squared will cancel with this a squared. And therefore, we essentially get our result. Um, a cubed on b plus b cubed on c plus c cubed on a is greater than or equal to AB plus BC plus AC as required. Click, boom. All right, so uh, an interesting way to round out this three part question. Um, we kind of had to, it wasn't, it wasn't technically a hence because we weren't following on directly from our result in part B. What we've really done is I guess they used the word deduce, the question writer opted for the word deduce here. And kind of what we've done is we've taken the result from part A and taken the technique from part B and kind of brought them together to say the result from A and the same technique as B can also get us this other result. So uh, an interesting twist, an interesting um, way to, to kind of get us to be thinking about the various techniques we can use for inequalities. Um, hopefully, hopefully it's all made sense and, and it's something you could perhaps replicate now having seen it. Um, if you did find that explanation helpful, please be sure to give it a like. And if you're someone who wants to keep their finger on the pulse with the kinds of questions that other students are struggling with, please be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can stay in the loop. All right, tick boom.